G'day viewers, it's Phil in the Philippines and uh, uh, welcome back if you've uh, been here before. Uh, it's great to see you again. Subject of my first vlog uh, that I'm going to do today is the first meeting after you've met a young lady online and you've decided that you're going to come to the Philippines. You've gone to a huge amount of expense, you're excited and uh, I'm going to give you two scenarios. One is the way it usually occurs when you uh, uh, get to the Philippines and what usually happens. Then I'm going to do a step-by-step -step as to the way I suggest you actually do it. That will, and in my scenario, it'll stop you fr uh, from becoming an ATM even before you leave the United States or England or Germany or Australia or New Zealand or wherever the hell you're coming from. Scenario one is how it usually occurs. You've been corresponding via the internet with a young lady, you've selected one, you're getting along famously. By this time, you, you're probably sending her a bit of money to, to get a buy. And I'll go into how much money you should be sending, if you should send any money at all, but, uh, possibly in the end of this vlog or in another vlog. But let's, the assumption is this. You've been talking to this young lady for a month, two months, six months, 12 months, whatever it happens to be, and you think this is the one. She's told you all the right things, uh, you feel comfortable, you feel confident, and you've made, and with her urging, you've decided, yes, I'm gonna pull the pin and I'm gonna go and have a look at this. I'm gonna meet up with this young lady first, uh, for the first time, face to face. I'm gonna see if all is kosher, and we'll see how it goes from there. Okay. Majority of these young ladies that are online usually are from the province. They may say that they're living in General Santos or they may in Davao or Cebu or, or wherever it happens to be, but the reality of the situation is their homes, nine times out of 10, are in the provinces. And it may be even up to a three hour bus drive away uh, from where they've stated online uh, that they're actually residing. Now, this is not to deceive in most of the cases, they realise that you don't know too much about the Philippines, so they're trying to give you an idea by naming the closest major city that you might be able to look up uh, on a map. A lot of these villages and Peruks and whatever aren't even on the maps, and her saying she comes from Talisai or wherever the case happens to be is irrelevant, and she knows that it's difficult for you to find out, so she'll turn around and say, in our particular case, she'll say, I'm from General Santos. She may be working in General Santos, or she may have relations in General Santos, or uh, Davao, or Cebu, or the Hall, or wherever, wherever it is. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is, you've just announced to her, baby, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the Philippines, I'm all excited, and uh, we'll finally get to meet each other. She's excited, you're excited. You've taken the plunge, you've bought the tickets. Now what's gonna happen is she's gonna say, listen, my love, she says, um, to get from home to meet you, I've got to get some money, you know, like uh, over and above the allowance. I've got maybe she's got kids to look after or whatever. And of course, you're going to be enthusiastic and say, Yes, my love, I'll send you some money. Okay, this is the first thing. I don't think it's a bad thing <coughs> whether you're sending money or not. Say, for instance, you're not sending money. Yes, I'm going to tell you now, nine times out of ten, to get to where you want them to go you're going to have to send a little bit of money, but I would not send more than about $50. Now, $50 is a huge amount of money for them, to, for them to go from point A to point B. Okay, so I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. Get under Western Union, send them 50 bucks, and that will cover their bus fare from wherever they're coming from. Uh, a bit of food money, and once you get to the Philippines, you'll realize food is the uh, paramount. Don't get over enthusiastic and send them a, a small fortune, a couple of hundred bucks or $500 or whatever it happens to be, or euros or everything. The equivalent of $50, if you're in the US, let's say $50, $50 US, I'm talking $50 Australian, but you can work out the difference. 50 bucks is not going to break you. So off you go. You've done all the requirements to get into a foreign country, and we won't go into that but I'm going to tell you step by step the way it's going to happen. You're going to get on a plane, you're going to you do your two or three stops or direct flight, and you're going to um, arrive at Manila Airport. You're going to get off the plane, you're going to go through uh, screening, then immigration, 
And here you are with all your baggage after you've picked it up, standing there, um, looking around for uh, uh, a young lady who's determined that she's going to meet you and you're happy that she is. You've made your bookings in a hotel. Um, you're all raring to go. What could possibly go wrong? I'm going to tell you what can possibly go wrong. What's going to happen nine times out of ten is, yes, your dear sweet girl is going to be there waiting, smiles, probably a, an inflated balloon, hysterically happy, and behind her is going to be half of her peruk or village or whatever, which is made up of most of her relations, her best friends and whatever. And, of course, your immediate reaction is, isn't, th isn't this nice? All these people have come to to greet me and she's going to come up, she's not going to be too overly affectionate to you on the first meet. She'll come up, she'll probably give you a hug, smile a lot, and so, isn't it wonderful, go through small talk, then she's going to go through the procedure of introducing you to anywhere between five and 15 people, maybe more, depending on the family size and whatever. They're all enthusiastic and all smiling and uh, they're ready to welcome you to the Philippines. Now you've just been on, if you're from the States, a 14 or 15 hour flight. If you've had stopovers even longer, you're gonna be absolutely knackered, but your adrenaline and your enthusiasm are going to take over and you're gonna say, and I'll think to yourself now, take me to wherever we're going, right? This is where we become, this is the first step in becoming an ATM. You're going to say, okay, well, well where are we going? Uh, are you going to take me to the hotel? She said, oh, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the hotel, but you know, why don't we go and have something to eat first? Okay, that's nice. You don't really feel like it, but you don't want to offend, so you say, yeah, okay, we'll go and have something to eat. That's assuming you arrive in the daytime. So off you go with these 15 people in tow. Now, then they're going to ask for you to get a bus, and of course, it's going to be expected that you pay for that bus fare if you go by bus. If you're unlucky, they'll order a, a, a 18 seater. And it's going to cost you more. You don't understand the language, so she's going to be organising it all, and she's going to say, "Baby, it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pesos, whatever it is, to go from the airport into Makati or somewhere or Angeles or wherever it happens to be." And they're all going to pile onto the bus, and everyone's hitting you with questions, smiling. Most people can't speak English, or they're too shy to do so and you're now in the hands of your beloved. She's going to whiz you away to some, some place, usually to a mall because it's air conditioned, and the whole five, six, seven, 10, 15 people are going to waltz in and they're all going to plonk themselves down. You have no idea what to order. You're going to get a menu stuck in your face that's probably 10 or 15 pages long, which has 100, 150 selections to do. You have no idea what to order, and you'll say to her nine times out of ten. If you're a Yank, you'll say, do they serve burgers or they serve fries and whatever, and she'll say yes to everything. But the reality is it'll probably be a lechon place, which is a, a pork place or something like that. Or even worse, you'll think it's cheap, and you'll say, let's go to Jolly Bee or let's go to some takeaway joint or whatever. It doesn't matter. You're going somewhere to eat, and you're all going to sit at the big table, and then you'll realise out of the blue how noisy all these little people are. And everyone's trying to talk to you at once and, and whatever, you're tired, you want to go to the hotel, but let's get this over and done with. You don't really know what's going to happen. And you're a little bit uh, uh, perplexed as to what to do. So you just follow the cues from your uh, new girlfriend. You'll sit down, everyone will order. And the orders will be immense. There's, there'll be rice, there'll be lechon, there'll be this, there'll be that, and this great huge pile of food over the next hour will start arriving at the table. That's great, everyone seems happy, they're happy to see you, you're feeling good, everyone will eat, then they'll order drinks and whatever. So an hour and a half later, you're sitting there and then the bill will come. Now everyone will go eyes right or eyes left and look at you. The bill will come to you, and it'll be X amount of thousands upon thousands of, of pesos. You expected that, if anything, they'd probably be uh, shouting you dinner, but, you know, the bills landed on your, on your lap. 
doesn't matter. It's only play money anyway, you think to yourself. She tells you how much it is. You fork out an immense amount of money, 10, 15, 000, whatever, whatever it is. Not even thinking to uh, do the conversion in your head. You've got plenty of pesos in your pocket. It doesn't really matter. My friends, you've already started the ATM journey. Then what will happen is nine times out of ten, the girl will say to the family, oh, well, you've met my beloved, and we're going to go off to the hotel now. Some may come, some, some will go. If she feels confident with you and comfortable with you, she'll go by herself. If she's still not 100% uh, confident and comfortable, she'll probably get her best friend to come along as well. Right up until the, the um, hotel doors or lobby or whatever. You've already made some monumental mistakes. What you've done is you've booked a hotel which you think will have all the amenities that you require coming from Europe or coming from the United States. So you're paying through the nose for the hotel anyway. You've probably booked in there for the duration of your holiday, not knowing anywhere else because, you know, it's a nice hotel. It's right in the middle of things. And uh, you've already prepaid for two weeks, whatever the duration of your trip is. Wrong, wrong, wrong. But anyway, we'll get into that. Okay, the family have decided to divide up after dinner. They'll all look at you and the beloved will say, baby, the family's got to get home. You know, could you possibly pay for their... It's only, don't worry, it's only a bus fare. It's only going to cost you a few thousand pesos more. And they all did come to see you. And of course, you're going to look sympathetically at them because you know they haven't got a great deal of money. And your hand's going to go in your pocket again. And out from the pocket will be a few more thousand pesos that they can all get on a bus and disappear to wherever they actually came from. Then if you're lucky, you'll be with your girlfriend, you'll get another taxi and you'll zot over to the hotel. You'll book in and away you go. That is the normal way. Now already you may be out of pocket with fares and meal and God knows what. 15 to 20,000 pesos, and you have not already, or you haven't got into your hotel yet. Then you do the conversion and realize you've just spent $500 or $1,000. Or, you know, it's very easy to do. Now, let me tell you, small holes sink big ships in this country. That's the scenario. You book into the hotel. Everything's honky-dory. You'll say to yourself, oh, it doesn't matter. It's the first day. I expected um, uh, to be spending some money. All you're interested in is getting back to the hotel and doing whatever, going to sleep, getting to know uh, your uh, girlfriend, whatever. We won't go into what's going to happen after that. This is what is usually the MO. But it really has primed you already because you are in holiday mode to spend money. Now, this is the first day, and you might be 200 300 400 500 dollars of your own currency or euros out of pocket, and you really haven't had the first night's sleep. Now, I'm going to su suggest scenario two to you that will save you a great deal of money, and it'll separate, again, the old saying, the wheat from the chaff. I would suggest... The first thing you do is you tell the young lady, yes, I'll send you your $50 to get you to wherever. If you're arriving, as an example, on the first, you tell her you're arriving on the second and you'll meet her at the hotel. Now, there's a reason for this. If you're meeting at the hotel, at least you're on neutral ground. When you're on the hotel, uh, at the hotel, before she comes, you say, love, if you're going to bring someone, can you only bring one or two people and you tell a little white lie? The hotel really doesn't like a huge amount of guests. So at least you reduce the numbers down to one, two or three people. Tell her, we can always meet your, your family, you know, in a couple of days' time. Okay, you've set the scene. You arrive on the first and what's going to happen is you're going to go through all the procedures at the, uh, at the airport. And I'm going to tell you how to get from point A to point B because everything in the Philippines is designed to create an ATM out of you. First thing you do is memorise where you're staying. Do not write it down on a piece of paper. Right? 
for a number of reasons. If you state where you're going and the, the area it's in, whether it's in McCarty or whether it's uh, in the hotel name, and act nonchalant, like you know where it is, if you get caught uh, by a, a spruker that whizzes you into a taxi, at least he'll think you know how to get there. So you're not going to go halfway around the world and pay through the nose for the taxi fare. So instead of handing him a piece of paper, memorise where you are, memorise the area it's in, and possibly the road. Okay, I'm going to get you to avoid taxis though. You've got off, you're in the lobby, you've collected your luggage, and away you go. Now, as soon as you get out of the, the building, a million and one spruikers are going to hit you because they can see tattooed across your forehead, tourist, because you're carrying a whole heap of bags. You've just arrived. I know you're international because you're at the international terminal. Everything, sir, 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 let me take your bag. Do not let anyone take your bag, not for the sake of theft. But what they're going to do is then direct you to a taxi. And the taxi, as an example, if you're going to McCarty, which is, uh, I don't know, uh, 15 uh, k's, maybe a little bit more from the airport through, through the traffic, there's a good chance, and you have no idea whatsoever what the correct rate of charging is going to be. He's taken your bag, he's lobbed it over to his, his mate or the company driver that he, he uses because he gets a commission, and he's going to say, this man wants to go to, and he's going to tell him. The guy's going to go, okay, you're, instead of you doing the right thing and asking how much it's going to be, you're just going to get it in the car. That fare will cost you 2,000 pesos. Maybe more. If you look like a sucker and dope and you're all dressed up like a pock doctor's clerk, he's going to charge you more. This is what you'll do. You'll get off. You'll ignore everyone trying to take your bag and direct you here, there and everywhere. Before you leave the terminal, you're going to look for a small booth or a couple of small booths. One with smartphone on it or one with globe on it. They're both the uh, national carriers here for telephones. You're going to walk up to them and you're going to get a SIM card. It'll cost you 20 pesos, 80 pesos, something to that effect. You're going to slip that SIM card in don't worry about charging it at this particular time, and you're going to put that in your phone. Then you'll walk outside, you'll ignore the spruikers, and you'll look for a green and white, very small, almost like a lemonade stand booth, with usually a line of people in front of it, and it's going to have GRAB written on it. G-R-A-B. This stands for grab a cab. Now the reason you're going to look for that is it's virtually the Philippines uh, equivalent of Uber. The way that works, you fall into line, you have your, your, your bags there, you've already memorised your address, you tell the young lady or the young man there that you're going to XYZ Hotel in Makati. Um, he then gets on a very small mobile phone and rings somebody on the Uber network rather than the app. You can get a, a grab app later, but he will ring somebody and he will hand you a very tiny slip of paper. And on that slip of paper, will be the charge to go to that hotel. Now rather than, you'll notice beforehand, if you went the other way, it's gonna cost you two to 3,000 pesos. On this slip of paper will be 180 pesos, 200 pesos. That will be the fare. Then there'll be a registration number or the last three numbers of a registration. He'll direct you to stand over where there's usually chairs set up and wait for a private car with the registration number of those three numbers that will pull up and that will be your car. There will be no overcharging. The cars are clean. The drivers are polite. You'll get into that. He will take you directly there and you will pay exactly what's on that piece of paper. Now for you Yanks, don't screw it up for the rest of us by throwing your money around and slipping him 10 bucks. They don't, you don't tip here. The majority of the time you do not tip. If you feel, if you can't tip in a coin, do not tip. So, okay, he drops you off at the airport. Worst possible thing if it's 180 pesos, you'll give him the 200 pesos. He won't have change. Okay, that's his tip. See you later. You go up into the hotel, you book in, you have a shower, you get a decent night's rest. Now, you've already pre-arranged with your girl that she comes direct to the hotel. When you go to the lobby, 
you tell the lobby that you're expecting a guest uh, the following day. This is her name and she should be uh, directed towards your room. Okay, at least you've got there on the first day. You're well rested, you know what's going on, you've had a sleep, you've had a shower, and then she turns up. You've already told her, only bring one or two, because the same scenario is going to go. She's going to want to, to size you up, she's going to want to see uh, what you're like, and she's going to want to do it in company, for two reasons. One, for her own safety, because you could be some peanut, and two, she wants someone to boast to, oh, this is my man, this is my best friend, and knowing that in the Philippines all they do is go back and gossip. So that girl can return to the Peruk or the village or whatever and she'll say, oh yes, uh, Daphne or, or Georgina's uh, boyfriend from Germany or from, from Sweden or from England or America turned up, he's very nice, he's a nice man, all this. You're still going to go and have to shout them a meal. You're still going to have to shout them a drink. Now, she, the second, second thing she's going to do you're going to say, oh, well, what are we going to do? Oh, I'll show you around. She's going to direct you to a mall. And the reason she's going to go there is, is you're now sweating like a pig. And she's going, oh, it's cool in the mall. And you're going to go along to SM Robinson's. or the, There's, a, there's a, a few major malls here, shopping centres. And then she's going to run amok. She's oh baby, oh, this is nice and that's nice and this, and she's going to test you out whether or not you're going to buy it. Put it off, put it off, put it off. You are there to have a look around, get out of the malls and whatever, or go back to the hotel room, get rid of the hangers on because they're going to cost you money. So listen, I'm tired, I only arrived late last night, we'll go back to the hotel, we can do this later. Get out of the malls, get rid of the friends, get back to the hotel, sit down and have some meaningful conversation. That's my suggestions. Remember that you've got a globe, a new telephone number. Cut off your US number. It's going to cost you a fortune. Over here, everything is SMS. You're going to load the phone up. She'll tell you how to load the phone and where to load the phone with whatever carrier you've got that'll be smart and globe and go from there. Now, I know you blokes aren't peanuts. I know you're, you're smart guys, but the little things here erode away and erode away at your pocket. You've got to be very wary. Okay, that's how I would suggest you do the meet and greet in the first day. Yes, you're going to miss the, the big dramatic, you know, um, the scene at the airport where the people are going to welcome you to a foreign country and make you feel comfortable. Do the meet and greet on your terms and not their terms. It will save you a fortune. Anyway, if you've got any problem, uh, any problems, questions, or whatever, or I can suggest any other way to you, or, or, or you want to run something by me, put the comments down below. I'm only too happy to answer the questions, or, or, or I'll do another vlog on it if I haven't given you enough information at the moment. I'm here to, through this journey to save you money, to make this transition, whether it be a visit, or whether it be on a semi-permanent or permanent basis to the Philippines and Southeast Asian countries, as smooth as possible. You know, I, I, I want to break all the vlogs down in a step-by-step. -step. You know, it's all very good for, for guys and other vlogs to say, you'll do this and you'll do that, but they don't give you a step-by-step. -step. You know, if you like this style of vlog, tell me, give me a thumbs up. Okay, the old thing, subscribe, subscribe. Push the bloody red button. You know, it's not going to kill you. It'll help me. It'll help with the the the, the system they've got here. And the, the channel will grow. Anyway, this is Phil in the Philippines. That's the vlog for today. I might do another one this afternoon on allowances. That's another good one. Allowances. So, give us a thumbs up. Write a comment. I'm only too happy to, to answer your comments. In fact, I like to see them. If you want to be negative about it, it's like water off a duck's at back with me, so you might as well not bother, but put down what you reckon. I love you and leave you. Till next time, it's Phil in the Philippines. Expat Phil. Cheers for now.